Good morning and welcome to San Gabriel. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or at home watching us, we're pleased that you've joined us this morning. I'm Ron Karish, and for the past three years, I have been the fellowship treasurer. I've been a U or a UU for almost 50 years. And I want to share a snippet of my life's journey with you this morning. One day, about 20 years ago, I'm loading my grocery purchases onto the checkout. And as the person ahead of me finishes, the cashier glances over, starts scanning the purchases, and asks me, how are you today, ma'am? What? <laughs> Ma'am? I think I mumbled some response, thought that was weird, and then promptly forgot about it. Sometime later, maybe a couple of months, maybe years, I'm hungry again. Back to a grocery store, probably a different grocery store, but certainly a different cashier who asks, did you find everything, ma'am? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> this is not right. Is the universe collapsing? Is it me? Maybe it's my clothes. Maybe I should grow a beard. Maybe it's my hair. Oh, please, not my hair. These were two very short casual interactions with strangers. They were just doing their job and I will probably never meet them again. Only five words. It's been 20 years and I still remember. Gender identity and pronouns uh, seem to be important to me. Mine are he and him. St. Gabriel is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association. If you would like to know more about us and learn about upcoming events, please go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. We especially welcome visitors. And when it is time for the offering, if uh, this is your first time here, please know that your presence today is your gift to us. Know that whoever you are, wherever you are from, whoever you love, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I am Reverend Jamie Andel, minister of this congregation, and my pronouns are they and them. I want to draw your attention to a few announcements if you don't have this, please grab it. There's lots of good stuff on the front and back. We are very busy. So one of the things I want to draw your attention to is the online UU Theology series. It's happening Wednesdays, April 12th through May 17th. So if you're interested in deepening your UU faith, this is a good way to do it. You can do it from the comfort of your home. And Karina has all the details about that. And also, there's a social justice team meeting. This time it's Tuesday. It's usually on Mondays. April 18th at 7. And one additional thing is the Texujum Action Hour. There's a lot going on in Texas, as we all know. And so every Thursday at 7 p.m., there's a call to action with all UUs across Texas for different things that you can gather together and do together because there's power in numbers. And there's more on the back. Chalice Lighting this morning is brought to us by Odette Fulbright Folson. This light we kindle is set in the lamp of our history. We inherit this free faith from the brave and gentle, fierce and outspoken, hearts and minds that have come before us. Let us be worthy inheritors of this faith and through our good works, pass it boldly on to a new generation. <coughs> Uh, 
Our opening hymn is Enter, Rejoice, and Commend. It's number 361. Our call to worship this morning is by Erica Hewitt. I invite you into relaxation, take a deep breath, let it all go. As we enter into worship, put away the pressures of the world that ask us to perform, to take up masks, to put on brave fronts. Silence the voices that ask you to be perfect. This is a community of compassion and welcoming. You do not have to do anything to earn the love contained within these walls. You do not have to be braver, smarter, stronger, better than you are in this moment to belong here with us. You only have to bring the gift of your body, no matter how able. You are seeking mine, no matter how busy. Your animal heart, no matter how broken. Bring all that you are, and all that you love to these moments together. Let us worship together. Our affirmation is an expression of the covenant we have with one another. Please read after me. The words will be projected. The doctrine of this church is love. The quest of truth is its sacrament. Service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace. To seek knowledge and freedom. To serve humanity in fellowship. We are all in to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. We are Thus do we covenant with each other. This to be it is time for the Wonder Box. Karina is traveling today, and I hope Reverend Jamie has the Wonder Box. What do we think is in it? Let me shake it again because the noise you heard was actually just the handle. Feathers? Silk flowers. Cotton balls? Nothing. Let's see.
I think we have a video that's going to explain more. <laughs> by Kelly Fritch and Anne McGuire, illustrated by Eduardo Trejos, published by AK Press. We move fast. We move slow. We move together. Sometimes we have to wait. Waiting can feel boring, frustrating, hard. Waiting can also feel exciting, like butterflies, like love. We wait so we can spend time together. Sometimes when we're together, we get stopped in our tracks like when all the fun and flavors of ice cream are just one step out of reach. We notice when things are unfair and it helps us get creative. We make plans, we solve problems, we build something better. We work together, kids and dogs, bodies and machines, bees and flowers, fish and water. Relying on each other helps us get where we need to go. Sometimes we find ourselves in unfamiliar places. We wonder, we get curious. We might have more questions than answers. Our questions can help us learn to do things differently and discover new ways of understanding each other. For the things that connect us are also what nourish us, like roots and tubes and straws and friends. And these things that connect us are often what challenge us. Sometimes we disagree about how to be together. Solving one problem can create another and we don't always know how to make things better. Sometimes we need to take a break. Even when we're by ourselves, we never move alone. Like feeling so close with someone who's far like learning from others who have come before. Their memories can ground us, soothe us, move us. Whether we're by ourselves or surrounded by many, our small movements can turn into big movements. We celebrate, we make change. We move together. The end. So in true type A uh, behavior, Karina has sent me a script, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, I love that this story is such a good message and fits for us as we remind one another of our stewardship commitments to this congregation. Written by and about disabled people, this story reminds us that when people have been at the margins, or at the, they're at the center of shared decision making, everyone benefits. Everyone can use the ramp to get into the building, not just those using the wheelchair. Velcro makes it easier for everyone to fasten their shoes, attach things together, or close their bags. We move together. As we strategize and plan for the future at San Gabriel, let's remember that we move together as a congregation, all of us, children, families, elders, staff, lay leaders, parents, gay, straight, cis, trans, men, women, white, black, abled, and disabled, we move together.
So today is our annual pledge drive. It begins today. Now, this might create some anxiety in some of us, and I am just going to name it, this is because of capitalism. If this isn't you, and this isn't ringing a bell, or you're not interested, you can feel free to sit this one out and come back at the end. <laughs> capitalism might have influenced how you think and move about in this world, even with awareness of it. You may have been inadvertently conditioned to think that there is a decline happening in churches, which creates what's called a scarcity mindset. COVID did us no favors in this way of thinking. We saw all too clear how systematic oppression is killing us, quite literally. The results are thinking that there is not enough of anything, not only in members and people gathering in our congregation, but not enough money in the congregation as well. If this feels familiar, the first thing I invite us to do is to get curious. Think about where this mindset may have started and if it is showing up in other parts of your life. Reverend Dr. Kristen Hall names this phenomenon as conditioning under quote unquote late capitalism. So this scarcity mindset influences how and where you spend your money, whether it is planning for retirement, sustaining retirement, balancing meals and car expenses until the next paycheck, trying to get a paycheck in the first place. It all adds up and we might think about money a lot in one day, several weeks in a row, many times in a month, and over the course of a year, which becomes years very quickly. This line of thinking might be projected into how we think about the church budget. So then the anxiety is manifested in the following statements. There are not enough people coming to church. We are running out of volunteers. We cannot afford to expand the staff's hours, much, le much less pay them part-time this year. It's not enough, you might think, over and over again. But imagine if you thought like this in the other relationships you have in your life. A relationship with a person is your sum total of thoughts about that person. You also have relationships with entities like money. So your relationship with money is just your sum total of thoughts about money. Think about it if you had a relationship with a person where you were always telling that person that they were not enough. How about in a relationship with your spouse, if you were always saying to your spouse, you're not around enough, you're not doing enough, you're not present enough, you don't love me enough, I wish you were doing more, I wish that you would show up more. Think about how the quality of your relationship with your spouse would be if you were always telling your spouse that they're not doing enough that they're not present enough, that they're not showing up enough. Now think about your relationship with money. There's not enough. It's not showing up. It's not doing what I wanted it to do. Where are we going to get more? I really need it. So then this translates into our congregation. People aren't giving enough. So we have to have more people to give more. And an air of desperation can take things over. You're not going to have a positive, life-giving relationship with money, nor with deepening your relationship to your own faith journey and fellowship in this church thinking that way. So the reason, the only reason that churches struggle so much financially is because they have negative thoughts about money. If you're willing to look at your money mindset, if you're willing to look at the quality of your relationship with finances in your church, and you're willing to change the relationship with money, then of course, the money is going to show up differently in the church because it's your thoughts that create that experience. This is not to say that there is some magic formula to all of this, but if you spend less time worrying about money, trust that it's gonna show up, we might come up with new, innovative, and relative ways to do church. The number may even change in terms of giving units and the quality of your relationship are going to change as you build awareness and as you decide this other way of thinking is how I want to be in the world. Do we, want, do we want to always be saying it's not enough? Or are we going to show up and completely miss the message of fellowship of our community and our mission here at San Gabriel 
because we're always worried about what's next? Or do we want to start looking for abundance? Do we want to start looking for the ways in which we are all enough and there is enough? Or more realistically, trust that there will always be enough when we need it. So this is just a way of coaching yourself to notice where your mindset is and to adjust accordingly. So your quality of life gets better and your experiences at San Gabriel get better. This will transform your mind from thinking there is not enough resources to looking at all that we are able to accomplish. If we move from thinking about the budget as this sort of nebulous thing into actual goals and missions of the church, that will help ground this line of thinking. And instead, you might think about the life-giving relationships and sustainability that happens when you personally move from someone who pledges at San Gabriel or is a member that pledges and to someone who is a member and a builder of this community. Do you want to be a builder of this church? This is the question we ask ourselves every year as we commit to making this place possible again when we talk about stewardship. Pledging is a way of saying, I believe in the mission and vision of San Gabriel Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. I see the way we come together and worship on Sunday mornings, the laughter that you share with one another over coffee afterwards, the holding of one another when things get tough, the honoring of one another's celebrations and life milestones. I witness all of the people that spend hours and hours and hours of their time, week after week, to make sure San Gabriel continues to happen. And it's all possible because you decided it was possible when you pledged and you chose to give money to this fellowship. You are the ones that decide what our community could and should look like. A pledge is how we know what to budget for and plan each year. What kind of staff we're able to retain and get, how many hours we can afford for them to work, what kinds of things we're gonna accomplish in the community, and how much we can accomplish in the world. Making a pledge is easy. Our treasurer, Ron, will explain more about the process later on in the service. Everything this community does and is able to do is because of you, because of your generosity, passion, and dedication. I love this place. I believe it is a sanctuary in so many ways. And I believe that it's more valuable now than it ever has been before in Georgetown, in our world, and in our lives. If you believe that too, consider help being a builder of this church for one more year. Amen and blessed be. Our second song is Gather the Spirit. It's number 347.
As we prepare to share joys and sorrows, let us settle into our seats. Let us give each other the gift of attention, deep breaths. We invite stillness into this moment. Ron's going to be walking around with the mic if you would like to share something. You may have heard this before, but I wanted to tell you that Maria Susan Wagner, who was a very active member of this church, passed away on March 21st of this year. Her family is having a memorial service for her in one of the children's homes. And if you would like additional information about that, the, uh, the ceremony or the memorial service um, in her memory will be next Saturday. And I have the information if you would like to do that. So, thank you. Will you repeat the name again, please? Maria Susan Wagner. Wagner. Hi, I'm Walt Holt. This is a concern and a joy. Uh, Fran and I went on a trip, uh, flew into um, Vancouver, Portland area, and we took the American Queen down the Columba Columbus Snake River, basically the uh, Lewis and Clark trip. And we were having a great time. Uh, the pianoist uh, was singing a lot of 60 songs, and there was a band there, and we were just having a great time. And then we received a text from our pet sitter, and the pet sitter said that our dog, Pepper, got loose in the middle of the night. So for three nights, she was on the run. And fortunately, the uh, pet club put out an email to all the various pet members. And finally, she was discovered off of Ronald Reagan, and five different people had to corral her and uh, was able to capture her. And we are, that's part of our joy, or our joy. And people that have dogs or had a dog understands this. For people that do not have a dog, a dog really becomes part of your family. So anyway, thank you. Hello, I'm, I'm Clara Dugan. Um, I, I won't try to classify this, but a week ago last Thursday, I started driving to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I have a duplex that I wanted to work on. And I drove 16 hours to Des Moines, went to the Unitarian service in Des Moines, and then I got a call from my husband that Clarice, my mother-in-law, was in, had, had called an ambulance and gone to the hospital and then at 2 a.m. and then at 6 she was discharged too early by far and um, my poor husband was beside himself he had no idea what to do but Michelle fortunately by the time I called her at 2 had he had her Easter dinner and cleaned up and she came and saved us until I could get on a plane and come back home so I am incredibly um, grateful also, I would like to say that um, Stephanie Blank is here today, and I hope all of you have a chance to meet her. She's one of the people that is working really hard uh, with our kids in the schools and on the school board. Um, and lastly, I would like to say that this church means a lot to me. My pledge will be in the mail today. It's a great day to put your pledge in the mail. <laughs> Uh, good morning, I'm Jay McMillan, and uh, in the theme of uh, today's sermon, I thought uh, of that little things sometimes mean more than, than, than big things, and so uh, in, the, in the spirit of paying it forward, those of you who may go to the laundromat, one of the little things that can happen is to leave change in the change machine when, when you get your change for the laundromat, and there are so many other things that, that, um, that can make a difference for people who are... Uh, 
with whom you're casually related. And so that's just, uh, just it, it, feel, it feels good, but then it's the right thing to do. My turn. <clears throat> Last Wednesday, there was a gathering hosted by Karina of families uh, here in the congregation that have children at home, and some of us older folks who have children spread across the country. It was a hoot. Uh, if you are interested in participating, you'll get to meet some of the people who have either more or less gray hair than you do, depending upon uh, where you are. And uh, we'll plan to do this, uh, you know, probably once a month. So talk to Karina. It was a great evening. Let us take a deep cleansing breath and exhale. For the joys shared, we join together in celebration. For the sorrows and concerns, we feel empathy and compassion. For all that remains unspoken, may the caring of the community offer a space of deep kindness and care. Well, Reverend Jamie uh, stole a little bit of my thunder, uh, but first I wanna clarify. We are solidly in good financial shape. We can make the payroll. <laughs> At one point in time, uh, Lynn Ellis was here. Uh, I think Lynn was a founding member. And way back, way back then, when they were beginning this, uh, this fellowship, the members gathered together and they thought about purchasing this property. Holy mackerel, a small group of people from Sun City and they were going to buy three buildings in the middle of Georgetown and, and you think you are worried about money. They were saying, can we do this? Uh, you know, is this going to be our financial ruin? What should we do? And the response from the UUA representative who was assisting them or counseling them said, you can do anything. You love each other. Go for it. This is the usual time in our service to do an offering and uh, today will be a little bit different. Today we are going to pass the baskets twice. The first time, and if we can start passing the baskets, the baskets will uh, contain envelopes. Uh, please take one. If you are visiting, take one anyway. No commitment, uh, but it does have some interesting uh, information about the San Gabriel Fellowship. Members and friends who are not here, those folks who are watching, uh, you will receive all of this information uh, in an email this week. The second passing of the baskets uh, will be uh, when we collect the offering. Okay? So, so as the baskets come around, please take one. About the envelopes. <clears throat> as Jamie ratted me out, this is the kickoff of the San Gabriel Pledge Drive for our fiscal year that runs from July 1st of this year through the end of June in 2024. This can be, this will be, a year to welcome those that we, friends that we haven't met yet. A year to re-engage with members and friends that we haven't seen quite as often as we used to. The pledge goal is $170,000. This is a little bit higher than the amount pledged last year. It's a little bit lower than the amount of cash received this year. Members and friends have contributed more money than was pledged. We are a very generous community. I'm confident that St. Gabriel will grow and that the fellowship will have the financial resources to support our continued 
good works, and maybe to do more. As Reverend Jamie has said, and she will say again, San Gabriel is here to stay, come what may. The pledge drive will wrap up in four weeks, mid-May. Then the board will finalize a budget, a proposed budget, for the members to vote on at our congregational meeting in the middle of June. We're trying to make this easy for you. There's a pledge card in each envelope. You can fill that out, put it in an envelope, and drop it in the collection plate on Sunday morning over the next three weeks. Or you can put it in an envelope and put it in the mail. You can send an email to the treasurer, which is me, or you can give me a call. Instructions are printed on the pledge card. I'm optimistic about the success of this pledge drive and about the financial stability of San Gabriel going forward. Pledge as you are able. Give till it feels good. Thank you for your generous and continuing support. Each week, we take an offering to sustain this space that we call home and to support the work of the fellowship. Thank you. The offertory music is Peace Like a River, arranged by Philip Cavernon. The offering will now be gratefully received. We close our sacred time together when we extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the chalice inside of our hearts, which serves as a beacon of hope. Emboldened by its blaze, we are reminded that our strength as prophetic and powerful people is found when we come together at San Gabriel, which is in Georgetown to stay, no matter what may come our way. Please join us for coffee and conversation as we have a postlude, I believe, recording. <coughs> Maybe. Well, join us for coffee and conversation anyway. <laughs> 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 